So today we are going to look at what hopefully is a motivational case where you can see very clearly that in order to understand certain problems that seemingly are quite simple, you sometimes have to go fairly complex into the analysis to once and for all shut down any discussion about this topic and then move on. And that's very useful in a, in a company setting. You, you can work in companies where you hear things being repeated by people and it's simply not true what they're going around saying, but there's this belief uh, that s certain things are true. And the topic that we're going to look at uh, is polarity related to loudspeaker specifically, where you look at what happens when you flip the wires to a loudspeaker driver. So a loudspeaker driver has two inputs or two terminals, plus and minus or red and black. What happens if you flip the wires? Um, what happens to the response from the loudspeaker? So if you go on to Google and, and search on face polarity, um, you're going to get uh, videos, uh, blog posts, uh, articles, and uh, pretty much all of them argue that there's a, a very big difference between polarity and phase. Uh, so that seemingly there's no phase shift that can give you the effect of a polarity flip. But they, the way they all argue for some reason is that they look at a time delay and they say, look, when we shift in time, um, we cannot get the same, we, we, we change the phase by moving a, a signal in time and, and we cannot uh, equate that to a polarity uh, flip. And that's true, but that, that's not what we're setting out to, to look at. We're looking at, is there a phase shift that can give you the effect of a polarity flip. And there is, but you cannot argue using a time delay. You need to look at phase on its own. And uh, so I made a sheet that takes into account uh, all of the things we're gonna look at in this video series once I find the time to, to do some more. So uh, th things like uh, causality and non-minimum versus minimum phase and uh, yeah delay versus phase these things can actually be put uh, very condensed into a sheet like this um, and that's what i've done so let's have a look at what's going on here <clears throat> so we had a, a one video already on complex numbers and now we're going to look at the concept of concept oh, sorry complex uh, signals so we have real signals, which is those that we uh, see here, um, like a cosine signal or a sine signal. Um, but most important is the argument here, omega t plus phi. So omega is the angular frequency, and I've explicitly written omega zero because I'm looking at a specific uh, angular frequency. So angular frequency is two pi uh, times normal frequency, one divided by period time. But here we are working with uh, angular frequency. So it has a unit of radians per second. And then we have a time dependency T, which is in seconds. So all in all, we get uh, radian, so we get some angle. That's the angle that is being used in all of these uh, posts and videos, that you can change the phase by letting time pass or conceptually moving something, a signal in time. You can have a, two different timelines uh, in some sense by adding a delay. But that's not the phase we, we look at in physics or mathematics. If we plot a frequency response, we, we have an amplitude as a function of frequency, and we have a phase as function of frequency. That's not this phase at all. That's this phase. That's the 
that's the so-called face of face. That's what we're interested in, and that's what we're looking to see. Is there some way to manipulate this for each frequency so that the effect is exactly the same as a polarity uh, flip? Um, real signals are kind of weird to work with. Um, it, it's easier to go to complex representation. Um, and when you work a lot in complex notation, you, you get this feeling that that's really how it should be. That, that when you're making a real signal in a, a measurement setup, it's, it feels like you're actually creating an imaginary part that you're just not seeing. It takes more effort in the complex domain to really make a, a real signal. You, um, so let's let's take that part of it. So we have this phaser concept where we have split, um, let me try and mark this up. So this part is what we often call the phaser. Sometimes we, we look at the whole thing here and say that's the time dependent phaser, for example. But we have an amplitude and that's a real number. Um, if it were a complex number, we could uh, change it into a real number and a phase. So the phase part is lumped in to this second part here, the exponential. So that's the phase of phase. Uh, it, it essentially tells you what is the phase at time equal to zero. Um, and that has to do with the fact that if you have an input that follows a certain uh, time scheme or you have a certain frequency that you input on the output you're gonna get the same uh, um, you're gonna get the same frequency out and only that frequency if we're looking at a linear uh, time invariant system so that, that the input and the output are, are going along the same timeline so if you divide the two um, you're not gonna see any change uh, as a function of time because they follow the same time. What what we are interested in is this complex phase apart. How are they different in amplitude and how are they different in phase? So we often write uh, signals and also uh, physical variables like sound pressure, uh, things like that, in this phaser form. And so what you can imagine is a complex number with magnitude A and a starting phase or phaser phase. And then as time goes by, it rotates around. So the, the angle it has to traverse is uh, 2 pi. And you can find an equivalent time that takes you round uh, 2 pi. So that's the period. But that period is the same for the input and the output. That's why we're not always too interested in that part. Um, it, it comes in when we're trying to create real signals. So we have this definition uh, or convention that positive frequencies run counterclockwise. And we can also have negative frequency phases uh, where we run in the opposite direction because we have a, a so-called negative frequency and um, the way we can then create real signals is to combine one uh, positive frequency phaser and one negative frequency phaser the way they add up uh, in this case is that the real part is exactly the same as a cosine signal. So if you add these two phasers, uh, you can imagine adding them like phasers, or oh, sorry, vectors, although they are not vectors. The phaser is short for phase vector, but there are different rules. Um, when you add these two, the effect or the result is a projection onto the real axis, which is a cosine, and a projection onto the imaginary axis, which is zero. And the same way you can add two phasers running in uh, opposite directions. 
and you, you get a, a sine wave. So it takes a little effort to get a real signal. Um, when we look at transfer functions, so what do, what do we have on the output divided by what do we have on the input? That's what we're interested in, the, the amplitude of that complex transfer function and the phase of that complex transfer function. When you look at this, you can see that that time dependency is gone now. All we're looking at is the phase apart, the output phase apart divided by the input phase apart. And there's a resulting phase uh, for that uh, fraction or for that ratio. And there's a resulting uh, magnitude for that phaser. So we divide two phases and we get a phaser out. So um, it's a complex input. We use S and we'll get to all of this with the Laplace transformation and things like that. So if you don't know all of this, just come back to it, use it for motivation. Um, here I'm looking at an all-pass filter and an all-pass filter has this uh, characteristics that it has a flat uh, frequency or well, it has a flat amplitude response as a function of frequency both at negative and positive frequencies so if we input a phaser a positive one or a negative one um, we can go in and see what is uh, the output and all it is uh, amplitude wise is that it's it's always a uh, or it's always the same amount of uh, magnif uh, amplification at all frequencies. And then it has a phase part too. Now, if we look uh, here, we can see that our input is not just omega, it's also a, a real part. So what we need to uh, realize is that phases only uh, work are uh, only interesting when we're looking at uh, sinusoidal signals, so not something that's ex exponentially dampened or uh, growing. Uh, you could imagine a phaser uh, which is exponentially uh, decaying, for example. So the, the phaser would be set off at time equal to zero, and then it would start to spiral in. So you'd need to draw some kind of uh, spiral. But in signal processing, we are mainly interested in what is the result looking at just the omega line. But therefore, it, it, it's still interesting and relevant to see what is the entire uh, complex transfer function. Um, and again, note that I'm only plotting the amplitude here or the magnitude. There's also a complex phase uh, response. <clears throat> So if you cut through here, you get a flat uh, um, amplification in this system that we're looking at, and I've just set it to one. So whatever we send in comes out with the same amplitude. And when I say whatever, I'm talking about pure sinusoidal signals, uh, positive or negative frequency. And then there's a phase response also. And what we didn't do is say, when we look at what's called real systems, we have symmetry. Uh, so we can look at positive frequencies and we can see we get the same at negative frequencies. For phase, the phase is uh, flipped and that fits with our negative phaser in a way that what we only need to look at is the, for example, the positive phaser. So the way we interpret transfer function is to say if if I have a transfer function phaser which is B and then some angle I know I really should uh, look at the result from half a positive phaser and half a negative phaser but I already know that the, the behavior of the system looking at just one of them so I'll just interpret this as the, the way the system works for positive fre frequencies only. 
and say the real frequency input or the real signal input I have just corresponds to a positive frequency. But positive and real negative frequency is really something that we have in the complex domain. So if we have a certain sine or cosine uh, input and we have a certain phase already on, on the input phaser. On the output, we get some uh, amplification from B. So if we start out with A as, as our magnitude, we now have A times B as magnitude. And then we have uh, two uh, phaser phases added together, you can say, uh, from the input signal and from the system itself. And we still have the same omega t as we do on the input. So relative, these two are what's interesting. So the one coming from the system and the, the, the one we already had on the input. And those are the ones that we need to look at. Um, another thing about uh, transfer function is that when we plot these uh, amplitude and phase responses, they directly tell us something about the output, but only steady state. And I think that's often forgotten. So I can go in and say at a certain angular frequency, steady state wise, once the system has been running for a while, I'm going to have a, a amplification of one. So if I have a, a certain A, uh, coefficient on my input, I'm going to have the same A on my output. And the same thing goes for, for the phase. I can see what is the phase relation between the output phaser and the input phaser after a while. Um, and that's what I've plotted here. So I have an input signal, which is a uh, sign signal. Um, so you can see it starts from zero, goes up. And then I have the output from this system here. And you can see it doesn't track the, the input at first. But after a little while, it does. But it's flipped. Uh, negative and positive are flipped. And we can see that directly. For this frequency, uh, or for this angular frequency, we are at minus pi in phase. So we know steady state wise, they should have the same amplitude and they should have uh, opposite phase, um, which is uh, like a polarity switch or flip. So we are already onto something. And then you can plot uh, the input and output phases. You can plot the transfer function phaser on its own. That's the way to study it. This is, these are the phases that we're interested in, not this one. We're not shifting anything in time uh, yet. So. If we could zoom in here, whoops, let's go up. So what I write here is that a polarity, oops, a polarity shift or flip is the same as a transfer function of minus one. So any positive signal that comes in gets or any, the, any signal you put in has a positive part and a, and a negative part. Positive becomes negative on the output, negative becomes positive on the output. And a 180 degree phase shift, so flipping this phase of phase of the system, because now I'm imagining the loudspeaker driver as a system and the terminal switch is a little system on its own. So that has a 180 degree phase shift. And, and you can write that as this, uh, oops, you can write that directly. We saw this uh, when looking at complex numbers, that this is the way to uh, enter a phase shift. We can see it from the phases that we just looked at. These two transfer functions are exactly the same. This amounts to minus one. So when we look at real signals, we think, well, 
minus one is a very definite thing where where we flip from one side the right side of the number line to the left one well if you have complex numbers that still holds the real part is flipped uh, across the imaginary or around the imaginary axis and the imaginary part is flipped around the real axis so it's still minus one on both parts we saw that when it came to multiplication that we can just multiply minus one with the complex number and it goes into the real part and the imaginary part so there is a phase shift that can obtain exactly what a polarity switch or flip does what the argument is or what people try to argue is that that's not the same as a uh, time shift and that's right it's not the same but you're discussing two different things um, so a time shift as a transfer function would look like this um, you have a linear phase and uh, the reason for that is you can you can just sit down and look at a wave that has a long sorry a signal uh, which has a long time period and then see what is the equivalent uh, time I would need to shift this to get a, a certain phase so what I proposed you you the way you shouldn't look at it but for for, for just sitting down and, and, and figuring out what what would be the time shift needed uh, to, to for example get to a 180 shift you can you can work it out and, and you'll see that the, the at different frequencies you need different phase shifts to have a resulting time delay so we have a phase delay and we have a group delay and in this case they're both the same I have chosen a specific time delay for this system so that at a, a specific frequency a specific angular frequency I have the same phase as I do for this polarity shift but it's not the same thing it's not the same system it's two different things going on um, so again everything has to fit together so right at that frequency we have the same transfer function phaser so there is something that's the same and that's the steady state response at this frequency but you cannot look at one frequency alone and know what what is the temporal behavior of this system you need to look at uh, several frequencies around it to know what's the time behavior for one frequency and that might feel a little awkward but that's how it is so if you send in a sinusoidal uh, signal the dotted one that we see here this system that just flips the polarity or shift the phase 180 degrees or minus 180 it's the same thing you can see it it starts out immediately it just goes down instead of up so you you have what you would expect for, from a, a polarity uh, flip there's no time delay why would there be uh, any temporal difference by flipping two wires so it all makes sense from a physical perspective what would happen to this loudspeaker um, but it's very different over here where we do have a time delay in the system uh, described by this linear phase because you can see that you have your input starting at t equal to zero but the output comes later there's zero and then it starts the output but if you just overlay this one with this one you can see after a while they have the same amplitude and they have the same phase because they have the same the system has the same phase of phase but you don't have the same transient behavior so the time is off uh, 
So the time delay is not to be equated by a phase, a certain uh, phase, other than a very specific situation where you have linear phase. And, and here it, it only works at one frequency. You cannot find another frequency where they will track uh, in amplitude and time like this because there's no other there's no other frequency where the, where the uh, transfer function phasor is the same and and that's where the arguments are wrong on pretty much all of these uh, pages that they look at one situation where where it where a phase shift and a time delay look the same and then they say well if I delay all other signals with this time, I'm not going to get a polarity switch or flip. And that's true, but that's not what we're trying to figure out here. We're trying to figure out, is there a phase that is equivalent to a polarity flip? And there is, and it's this one. It's exactly the same thing. So if you look at the impulse response, you might be able to see there's a dotted line here. So we have an impulse right at t equal to zero. The output is also an impulse, but it's just negative. As, as we would expect from just changing two wires, this is what we get from this transfer function here. Whereas for this one, we can see any signal that we input is gonna be delayed. It's gonna be perfectly represented after that delay so it's like we create a new time scale in some sense and you can say uh, that there's that it's transient perfect some in the loudspeaker world we would say it's transient perfect uh, or you could say there's no distortion there's no phase distortion i would argue that there is but it's just one where we are willing to accept it we have a distortion and, and it's just a very specific distortion that gives us an overall time delay for all frequencies. Um, so I would say there is distortion, but if you look in textbooks, they're gonna probably say that this is distortion free. So, um, so what I say here in the end is, you cannot look at two situations that look the same and then argue something about uh, other situations. So what's, what's going wrong for these people is that they're looking at what's called non-causal sinusoidal signals. So signals that have been turned on uh, ages ago and now they're just going and, and then you're uh, making a duplicate of that and shifting it in time. There's no start time for either of them. So you're just seeing um, you're seeing this picture at all times. So in this case, that, that uh, for a given reference, uh, reference sinusoidal, we can shift, we can make a copy and shift that in time, and we have something that looks opposite. Um, but you could also delay... Uh, so yeah, so that now I'm messing up the words. So you could flip the face of this signal uh, 180 degrees, or you could shift it in time and and have something that looks the same. But if you if you make this bold uh, line uh, for the output or for the shifted signal which is uh, manipulated. You could see if you shift it in time and you could somehow track uh, the signal in time, you would see it's time shifted and this one is phase shifted. But we, when you just measure it, they're gonna look the same. But you, can, you cannot draw any conclusions if you truncate the sine wave, if you just have a few periods and then it's zero, uh, so if it's zero and then a few uh, periods and then it's uh, zero again, you have a truncated signal. Um, and that signal has many, many uh, frequencies in it. It has infinitely many frequencies. And there you're gonna see a clear difference between uh, shifting the face of all of these signals 
or shifting these uh, signals or components in time. So as long as you, you know, if you just take two sinusoidal signals with different frequencies, you're going to see these two are not the same. So a time delay is not equivalent to any uh, numeric phase. You have to make it a linear phase. And you'll also see it when you look at it as a system, because we often look at causal systems. We, we, there's a certain time where we turn on the signal. And then after that, we look at what is the output. And there you can go in and track, well, there is no output for a while, and then we have an output if it's a time delay system. But we don't see that time delay if we just flip polarity. Um, so I think this is the whole crux and where all of these articles take a wrong turn. Um, and again, it's, it's such a non-issue. I think that it's never really treated in, in textbooks like this because there's no need to. People are not confused about this, hopefully. Um, so all of this uh, impromptu just to say Sometimes to treat these seemingly uh, trivial discussions, you need to go back and to convince people. You have to take it from Adam and Eve and take all of these steps and say, look, if you go through it thoroughly, you'll see it. it's, it's not the same thing. You, you're arguing on a, a bad premise. There is absolutely a phase shift that you can come up with that gives you a polarity flip. So I hope uh, this rambling gives you some insight uh, into the kind of discussions you will be able to take uh, if you have your signal processing down. So uh, yeah, take care.